Hello, everyone. I'm not sure. Nope, I muted you. Hello, hello, hello. My name is Zakia Ringgold, and you have toned who's Azaman. Welcome to the broadcast, Aza. Um, you have tuned into our Super Soap Sunday, where we will be making bath bombs live. I was trying to make sure that this was actually showing up. Um, hi from New Zealand. Well, hello, Mystical Touch. Very nice to have you. Erica from Edible Sins, welcome back. I am so happy to have all of you. If you are brand new to me, number one, welcome to the broadcast. If you have been here before, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Um, and let's see, all of you are, hello, Montana. I have not scared you away, which is fantastic. You for sight who always runs the basis for us. Thank you so very much. This will be a very interesting broadcast for sure. I'll in town. I went to school in Bloomsburg. Very nice to see you here. Um, Tammy, hello. Chantel, very good to see you. Feels like it's been forever. Forever, ever, and ever, ever. But hello, everyone. If you are new, I'm Zakia Ringgold. I happen to be the owner of Live Soap School as well as naturalsoapbyzakia.com. Both of them happen to be .coms. And tonight, what we're going to be doing, or today, or this morning, depending on when you watch this broadcast, we are making some bath bombs. Who is that? Soap Lady, I make money moves. I am doing very well. Thank you for checking in. Morning from good old Australia. Well, good day, mate. Very good to see you. Now, let me make sure, let's cancel. Where are we live, guys? You first sight, you gotta let me know. Did we land where, everywhere we were supposed to land? We should be everywhere. I don't see my fancy people coming from Facebook. We are there. Periscope, you guys are rocking and rolling. YouTube, welcome, welcome. And uh, Amazon Live did not make it. Let's see what happened with Amazon. So if you have not already typed in where you are watching from, please do let me know so that I can send you a shout out. And then I'll come back here so we can actually get started. Let's see. Let's hide that. Um, the beautiful Drea has made it. Hi, Drea. Good to see you. It really has. I took a break from Periscope. I took a break from everything because of hashtag Corona. I took a break or a break took me. How about that? Hey, hey, Ali, welcome. Real Kitchen Diva over on YouTube, checking us out. Good to see you. You got me on Facebook too. Sounds excellent. So it will not work on um, Amazon, but we'll have to just upload this later. However, um, I am so happy to see all of you and I am going to try and switch you over. Unfortunately, I did a different app today in order to do this broadcast specifically so that we could do it on Amazon, but it's networking on Amazon. So I don't have my typical tools that I would be using to do a live stream. So if you have never been here with me before, my name is Zakia Ringgold. We are rocking the infamous or the famous um, apron that was given to me as a birthday gift from Birdie. And it was handmade by um, Camia, who did this whole thing and all of that. So support your local small businesses. Um, you're live on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Thank you so much, you for sight. Thank you for checking us out. So we are definitely live there. Wherever you happen to be watching from, please, please, please be sure to make sure that you hit that like, subscribe, share, follow, whatever it is that you need to do so that you do not miss the next time we go live. So I am going to switch the cameras over because you need a better angle of everything that we are actually going to be using today. So let's switch you over there. So right here, can you guys see? Let's pull you right here and maybe right here. I'm hoping that works. And if I miss your comments, charge it to my heart. I mean, my head, not my heart. Um, it's a, a little bit tricky trying to get back into the swing of things. So we are going to be making bath bombs. 
I have a lot of extra because I am queen extra when it comes to the supplies that you need. I will tell you what you absolutely positively must have. And then I will tell you those things that are kind of sort of nice to have um, to make your life a little bit easier. The one and only Queen Z, the soap master. <laughs> I was just on the phone with um, another soap maker and we said we will never call ourselves soap masters or master soap maker and you come on. It's cool, Ali. I get what you are saying. The number one thing when it comes to making bath bombs are your primary ingredients. And that's what I'm showing you here. Let me get it in frame. This one is your primary setup for your bath bombs. It consists of baking soda. This also has arrowroot powder in here. Um, the interesting thing, let me, before I need to actually do one thing here. There's two reasons why we're doing bath bombs today. Two reasons, and I need to say this out loud. There are two ladies, both who have now passed away in the soaping industry. One of them is Teal. Teal was the maker of the um, baby bell, I call it the baby bell press. But she was the one who taught me to hold off on putting my um, citric acid in until after I've done all of my liquids to prevent the bath bombs from fizzing. There's another maker, um, Holly Port, who is the writer or the author of Make It Fizz, which is a bath bomb making book full of all kinds of recipes. She also passed away um, this year. So two ladies who I learned a ton from in terms of making bath bombs have both gone on to glory. Um, so I just wanted to just give them a little bit of acknowledgement before I moved on because Teal, I, I would try and do my bath bombs over and over again. She gave me a recipe that would not fail. And then she also gave me the tip about the citric acid. So if you are somebody who is trying to figure out how to make bath bombs, try to hold off on the citric acid because that is what makes your bath bombs go kapooey um, or do the reaction. Can you guys let me know how is the signal? Are we breaking up or do I need to plug in so that we have a better signal? Um, if you guys can let me know that, that would be fantastic. Um, additionally, Holly Port, I met her at a Soap Guild conference and I had purchased her book years ago and I had saw her book when I went down the basement. How many of you remember when we were going to switch over to my basement. We started in the basement, then we came upstairs to the dining room, then we were gonna go back downstairs to the basement, but that has changed. Okay on YouTube, good on Facebook. Thank you guys, I appreciate it. Um, I was down the basement, look, look, let me just shout all of you out, look at this. Thank you, J Robo, thank you, Ali, thank you, Erica. All three bases have been locked, loaded, and checked. This is the beauty of Soap Nation and doing this live. Good signal, says feline or feline. I love natural soaps that don't dry my hands. You have come to the right place. Zakia, what did you say? I so enjoyed your telling of your background yesterday. Oh, I am so glad you did not tune out. I'm so glad to hear that. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, I want a bath bomb. Okay, so you're gonna learn how to make them. And maybe after you see this, you'll probably say there's no way that I'm making a bath bomb. But Holly Port wrote a book and I'm gonna grab her book. It's called, I'm not gonna grab it. I'll grab it when we do like a break or something. And we're probably gonna have to cut this in two so that I can use my other one. Love your apron, girl. Thank you. This was a gift from Birdie, hashtag shout out Birdie. I'm gonna post this on her Instagram. Um, it was a birthday gift. So. Um, just paying homage to those people who spent a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of money trying to figure out the correct ratio to be able to make a bath bomb. And if you don't know what a bath bomb is, a bath bomb is that amazing thing that you drop into the water and then it fizzes, bubbles, and gives you all kinds of aromatherapy and self-care. Self-love in the tub is what I like to call my bath bombs. We're going to do three different kinds tonight. One is a crushed oatmeal bath bomb. 
Another one is a lavender bath bomb. And the other one is going to be a secret surprise because I'm not really sure which one I'm going to do for the third one. Um, hello, sis. How are you, Carla? And I get super dry skin in winters if I don't use good soaps. You have come to the right place. Hashtag birdie. Yes, even though you're not here, we are giving you a shout out for this apron girl. All right. So now we will come back because I have said what I need to say about those amazing ladies. We are not using one ingredient that you will typically hear about in a bath bomb. That is sodium laurel sulfate, S-L-S-A. Um, number one, it makes me sneeze whenever I use it. Um, but that's what gives you that real bubble bubble action. Because we are just doing, this is more of a soothing bath bomb. You will get that fizz, but you will not get that bubble, bubble, bubble action. It's no longer 100% natural. Also, when you add that ingredient in there, what we are making tonight is a 100% natural bath bomb. Yes, I will be giving you all the recipe in case you are wondering, but there are amazing books out there that you can try as well. And without further ado, Let's go ahead and take you over to the soap cam. Everybody put in hashtag soap cam so that I know you, or bath cam. It's a bath cam tonight. Okay. So as I stated, inside of here, we have a combination of baking soda and we also have arrowroot powder. If you do not have arrowroot powder, you can, wait, what was I, what was I about to say? Um, you can use cornstarch in place of it. So in here we have, let me pull up my recipe. We have 25 ounces of baking soda and we have five ounces of arrowroot powder. We're going to add that into our stand mixer. If you do not have, thanks for the soap cam, um, Drea. If you don't have a stand mixer, you can absolutely positively mix this on your own with, um, with your hands or with a blender. You don't have to use a, I'm just being fancy. Just being a little bit fancy. All right, we gotta pull this over. This baby is heavy, heavy. Let's pull her up. So I'm going to transfer. Okay, you guys can see that, right? Okay. All right, so I'm going to transfer these ingredients from here. And we're going to get a ton of powder, but I'm not so worried. If you are, here's the thing. When you are doing big, big batches of bath bombs or any batch, because these powders are so fine, we all should have face masks anyway. There's no reason not to have a face mask today. Wear a face mask so that those little particles are not going into your lungs. So here we also have our um, citric acid. And for the citric acid, we're using 14 ounces. And so I'm going to use my hand to break that up as I'm putting it in there because you don't really want any chunks inside of your mixture. So I'm just taking a moment with my hand with this citric acid and just breaking up the chunks. You could use a strainer. You can absolutely use a strainer, but it's kind of therapeutic to do it with your hands. So Halloween was last night. I'm also on the East Coast and daylight savings time was today. So we kind of got an extra hour, which is why I'm so productive today. I've got a lot done today. So my first question for all of you while we are doing this is, what did you do for Halloween if you did anything? Um, Paige isn't here right now, but I told her that Halloween was canceled this year. Might have told a little bit of a fib, but you know. I had no interest in trick-or-treating. Zero. Zero interest at all. All right. So we're going to keep on breaking that and pushing it in. All right. So we've got that. So we're going to break that up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to slow, oh shoot, I wasn't supposed to add the citric acid in. See, I talked about Tito teaching me not to do that and I did it anyway. Um, but I typically would hold off on the citric acid until after I've added all of my liquids. 
Now, in terms of the liquids, we are using two ounces of melted shea butter. And then we're also adding one ounce um, of our infused lavender olive oil. When I tell you, and maybe I'll do another broadcast on how I infused the olive oil, but it is absolutely, it has such a strong aroma to it. And we're also going to be using a lavender essential oil for this particular bath bomb. This is going to be our herbal relaxation bath bomb here. So I'm not sure if I said lavender earlier, but that's the third one that we are going to be using here. All right, so we do have a couple of chunks in there, but I'm not so worried about that. Um, you wanna get yourself a scale, no matter what kind of, oh, I think this is unplugged, no matter what kind of products you are making, bath and body products, um, skincare products, anything, typically measurement is super, super important. And you want to try and get all of your measurements as accurate as possible so that you can reproduce the recipe a second time and control it. If you are just willy nilly pouring things in, it's going to be pretty hard um, to keep track of what you're supposed to be doing here. So I'm going to add a half an ounce of water. Don't need a lot of water for this. This is just to help get everything to stick together. Okay, we went a little bit over. That's 0.65 ounces. We're also going to do a half of ounce, half an ounce of alcohol. There was a time earlier this year where you could not get yourself some alcohol. Um, I have 50 gallons of alcohol. All right, so let's get this. All right, a little more. And then we're also going to add a half an ounce of the essential oil. Now, I don't know how many of you know, but when we had the soap conference, we had the virtual soap conference, one of the sponsors was Anata Oil. Now, Anata Essential Oil, they get their essential oils from different farmers from all over the world. So this particular essential oil comes from Bulgaria and it's um, from Jero. Here is the owner of who makes that right there. It says their business in cultivating herbs and plants is highly motivating for them, not only professionally, but also personally. The theoretical knowledge that they possess as well as experience in the field is extremely helpful when establishing their product's position on the market. We believe that the person behind the product is crucial for the end result and that one needs to truly believe in what they are doing in order to succeed. And so you get a little bio of the farmers um, for a Nada market. And so we're going to add in a half an ounce. I'm just going to take this lid off because we'll be here forever. Tap, tap, tapping. We don't want to do that. So let me just take this off. I'm taking the... I don't know if you guys can see, but there's like a cap on there that makes it easier to just get smaller drops. Oh, come on. There you go. You want to do it. Come on. You can do it. All right. So let's get a half ounce of the lavender essential oil. I think that's what was in here. Yep. Half an ounce. These little bottles. Perfect size. If you're wondering how much is in there, it's a half. Oh, it is so. Oh, that is going to go magnificently with our, whatchamacallit, <laughs> with our lavender infused olive oil. All right, so we have that. We have this here. So, what we're going to do is put our blender raw there. We're going to push this down in there. I'm going to make sure that it's actually plugged in because I think I just unplugged it for that. Yes, I did. And here is where you want to get yourself a towel because otherwise you are going to have powder coming up all over you. Let me see if you guys will get a better view if I switch the camera to this one. Yeah, you'll get a better view that way. Okay, so we put the the um the solid ingredients inside so i am going to put this on a low blend 
just to kind of incorporate those two together. And you'll kind of see it moving around. And then I'm going to slowly start adding the melted oil and butter. So this is the two ounces of shea butter and one ounce of the lavender infused olive oil. So I'm just going to pour that. And now I'm also going to go ahead and add in our liquid too. And the reason why I do that while it's blending is so that it doesn't activate. If you don't have a stand mixer, hey, hey, Mr. Ashby. Um, if you don't have a stand mixer, you can absolutely positively do this by hand. You can use a blender, right? Or you can start with your hand. And I'm going to go ahead and pour in the remainder of our oil. And then I'm also going to encourage it just a little bit. Encourage it a little bit by pushing down what we have on the sides so that it gets in with the mixture. We can actually take our towel off at this point because it's now been wet for a moment. And because it's gotten wet, there's not as much free form powder coming up, right? I wish you all could smell my house. When I tell you I am going to have, I'm going, I always am my first guinea pig um, with the bath bomb. So I have my wine chilling in the refrigerator. And then when this broadcast is done, I'm going to go drop one of these bath bombs in the tub. Now, we don't want to stir this too much because that will dry it out. It will absolutely positively dry it out. So once it's completely mixed, you can turn off your blender or your stand mixer or whatever it is that you're using. And then what you want to do is you want to use either a spatula or your hand to just go down at the bottom and make sure that every single thing is 100% mixed up. You want everything mixed. And so it kind of looks like snow. People always say it should have the consistency and the feel of, um, what is that? Wet sand. Whenever mine feels like wet sand, it don't, it don't work out the way we thought it was going to work out. So now what I want to tell you is, hello, Porgy, welcome back. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. So glad you're here, glad you're here. Glad you're here. All right. So um, I don't have a purple um, bath bomb coloring. And this is very important. When you are making your bath bombs, it is very important that you do not use food coloring. I know a lot of the recipes that are going around online say you should use food coloring. The hacks that are on YouTube use food coloring. Number one, if you're selling that, that's against FDA rules. So you want to avoid doing that. Hello, you near for tarot bar. Hello. I really, I, 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 I saw you here before, but I cannot, you're going to have to phonetically spell your name for me. So you want to make sure that you have bath bomb colorant. That, and that's colorant that has been approved by the FDA for us to use with our bath bombs. So here is our mixture. What we wanna do is divide it into two because we wanna have a blue and a white color. Um, if you don't have a blue and a white color, you can keep it 100% white. It's just that you won't have any color in the tub um, with you. Now, depending on the type of color you use, you will need to use polysorbate 80. Um, polysorbate 80 is something that will help to disperse the um, colorant in the tub so that it's not just kind of hanging out on the side. As a matter of fact, let me see if I have one right here. Hey guys, good to see you. Mm -hmm. uh, that's witch hazel. You can also use witch, I don't have any. I don't see any. All right, whatevs. Pretend like I didn't say that. Ignore that part. All right. Um, all right. So I'm going to get a little piece of parchment paper. I don't know how little that would be considered. And I'm going to show you one, two, 
three different molds that you can use to make your bath bombs. You want to see that? Like to see it? Here we go. All right. Now we can go this way. Yennefer. Yennefer. Oh, well, of course. It's so simple when you put it that way, right? Okay. So um, you want to get yourself a piece of parchment paper. And let me just bring this mixture right here. And if you can see, when I ball that up in my hand, it just stays. That's what you want. If it's still crumbling, you need to add more liquid to it. It will not form if it does that. But this is a perfect recipe. Do you see how it's not? Look, that's a ball. And that's exactly what we want. It's enough so that it's not too wet. It'll dry out quickly. And I will give you that recipe again. Whenever I put this up on the blog, it will be there as well. So you have a couple of options when it comes to bath bomb molds. This is um, a stainless steel bath bomb mold. It comes in a couple of sizes. That's a medium size one and that's a baby one right there. You also have these plastic spherical molds, which are these right here. I don't know if you guys can see that. That's going to give you a much larger um, bath bomb. And then if you just want to make flowers, um, the same things that you use for cutting out cupcakes or anything like that, you can use these as well. And they come in two different sizes. So we're going to use all three of these different types to make different bath bombs. Do you add the polysorbate 80 when you add the other? Yes, yes. Um, and I would typically do a half an ounce for the recipe that we just did. Um, good question. So you always do the dry ingredients by themselves and then you do the wet ingredients by themselves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate this out just a little bit because I do want some blue, not a whole lot of blue. So what I did was I just poured some of my mixture from this batch in here. Now you do want to move much faster than I am because this will start drying out. And if it dries out completely, then you're going to have to start adding wetness to it and all of that. All right. So now what I'll do is simply take a little tap. When I say a little, I mean, look at it, not even a teaspoon, right? And I tap, tap, tap. And there's a person, Drea, I'm not sure if you are on periscope but if you are i think you are one of my moderators can you take care of the person that needs my attention but i can't give it to him and if not don't worry about it all right so we have the blue in here and i'm going to take our spatula and just blend it up together just a little bit so that it's not right there and if i want to add a little more i can All right, so now that I've done that, I can take my hands and then just take it and blend it together. If you want a more vibrant blue, you can add a lot. Don't go over one teaspoon for the amount of this recipe. If you go over that, there is a chance that it's just gonna be way too dark. Oh, this smell. I, I wish you guys could smell the lavender. I think it's the combination of the infused olive oil with the essential oil, which is just bringing that up even more so. All righty. That's good to go. And now what we do is we just pack our bath on. I can't see the comments. Oh, it's okay. Maybe Periscope is moderating it for me then. All right, so we have our blue and we have our white, right? So what we'll do is we'll start with the uh, metal or the stainless steel ones first. So I'll put just a little bit of the blue on one side. Then I'll grab some of the white, put it on the other side, just like that. Now, one thing that I have learned from several um, bath bomb groups is if you poke a hole like a little dot into the mold that will put some air inside of your bath bomb and help it to spin. Lavender is one of my favorite essential oils. I knew nothing about lavender until I started making soap alley. 
absolutely positively nothing. Now you do want to, when you're filling your mold, you don't want it super tight, but you do want it higher than the side. So I have that one. Now let's grab this other one. I'm going to fill that with blue on one side and white on the other side. And it's very, very simple. I'm going to put a little bit of air pockets in there too. We put them together. Mash them, mash them, mash them up. You want to wipe off your sides. And we're just going to let that sit for just a second. Okay, so we have one in a stainless steel mold first. I'm going to let that one sit. We're going to do a little mini one. Look, we've already created our own blend in there. So there's no need for me to grab the white. I can do this one same way. And what we're going to do is just push them together. Bam. That one because it doesn't kind of feel on kilter, but we'll find out. Next one, we're going to do our larger one. Same thing. Put it right in. A little higher. And I'm going to do the other side all white. I should have did like a couple drops of the blue at the bottom. But that's okay. All right. And I'm just going to pile it so that it encourages it to marry together. So can you guys see that? When we push it together, that is what makes the bath bomb. And you just want to make sure that it's 100% pushed so that when you go to unmold it, it is stuck together. And that's how it's getting the design on there. If you've ever gone into the stores now that are all selling bath bombs, by the way, look at those ingredients. That's the only thing I'm going to say. Do you want to be sitting in who knows what? Um, check out the ingredients of any bath products that you are buying. They have found out that people love bath bombs. So Lord knows what they are putting in them. So one side is the white and then one side is the blue and white. I can already see I could have probably put a little more in there. Um, and that will end up being a bath bomb as well. So then let's say we want to do our flowers. Very, very simple. We are going to go with the ribbed side of it down. And then we will just pack this like that. Try not to get too much of your mixture all. Darn it, Gina. Don't do that. Okay. Now, I do have a bath bomb machine, but I know most of you do not have a bath bomb machine. So I did not want to spend a whole broadcast doing that one. But we will do the remainder of our bath bombs with the bath bomb machine. And now what I'm going to do in here is, as you can see, I'm kind of pushing it down with my finger to make it as tight as possible. Let me grab a little bit of the white for the top. And I'll put blue to finish her off. And if you could type in the comments, do you use bath bombs? Do you make bath bombs? Or do you like, nope, just watching because I need something to look at on Periscope. <laughs> just watching something on social media right now. I'm going to do these other ones as well. I'm going to put the blue down here at the bottom. And you just want to kind of pack it in there so that it's able to take shape. Same thing with this one. Pack her in. And this is nothing but a cookie cutter, a plastic cookie cutter. Sometimes the, um, not the plastic, the stainless steel ones work well too. I 
Let's do this one. I've never used or made a bath bomb before, but it looks cool. I make bath bombs. I make and use them. Hey, Shelly. Um, Drea said she makes them as well. I can't use commercial bath bombs, but I can use clean ones, and I love them. I've made them once. Yeah, they're a lot of fun to make. And you can make them whatever shape you want, as long as you have a mold for it, right? The hardest part for me when I was when I first started making them was getting the mixture to the right consistency. I don't care what I did. These things would just do what they wanted. Um, they would not mold. Um, they would just take on a life of their own, all kinds of craziness. Hey, hey, Shelly, welcome to the broadcast. I don't know if I've seen, it's been so long since I've broadcast on a regular basis. If I've seen you before, welcome back. If not, good to see you today. Erica says she uses them. Okay. So that one is as full as it's going to get. This one is just getting to be too big. I'm not going to pack any more in there. And I have two more of these molds. So I'm going to go ahead and add this blue just to get rid of it. Then this white on the top. Sorry, you guys. Everything is completely out of frame. You can't see anything that I'm doing. There we go. And we'll do the same for this side. And this is starting to combine with itself. So we want to keep it moving and grooving there. I know. Good to see you. Too. I know this pandemic. Jeez Louise. All right. So we're going to bend those together. And then take it around. Get the excess off. And now that one will sit off to the side, let it do its thing. And then I'm just going to fill these up. And that'll be the rest of the mixture. See how it's starting to get solid? I've bought a bath bomb kit and made that up. But there was no polysorbate in the kit. And the color left a ring around my tub. It really put me... Yeah. That is one of the biggest things. Um... I'm using a lake, a lake colorant, which does not require um, polysorbate 80, but sometimes if you're using a mica colorant or possibly even food coloring, food coloring will definitely leave a ring around your tub. Um, so aside from it not being FDA approved to use as a bath product, um, so I'm very sorry to hear that, but polysorbate 80 is what you want to avoid the ring or the dyeing of your tub. That's what we're really talking about with the polysorbate 80 because it disperses all of the oils and the color so that it's not sitting there adhering to your porcelain tub. I just wanna make sure that's as full. And then we're just gonna bend those together. Oh man. I don't know if you guys don't know, lavender is just such a calming and soothing scent. I'm sitting here in like la la land, like, hmm. and then I just kind of use my hand and take it around and just bend it like that, just making sure it's all connected because these aren't really the right two spheres for this. I have two of the same sides. I don't know what happened to my spheres. All right, and I'm just going to do a little baby one for good measure. Push them together. You guys aren't telling me that you can't see. Right there. Push them and then roll it around. I have followed you in the Facebook, but got the notification from YouTube. Yes, I am on. I'm streaming on all the platforms at the same time. Just to keep everybody on their toes, I guess. <laughs> keep it everybody on their toes. 
All right, last one should be this one here. And then we will unmold them so you can see what they look like finished. Now you still have to let them sit. Um, typically overnight, I like to let my bath bomb sit so that they're as hard, like rock hard. Like if they fall on the ground, they shouldn't crack. Well, depend. like we're not trying to do drop tests, um, but they should maintain their size. Let's try and get as much. And that's kind of coagulating together. I love how your whole house smells like, yes, Shelly. Nobody better be in a bad mood. They can't be. I feel like I don't have enough mixture in this one. It's going to want to misbehave. Let me try and scrape up what I can off the table. Here's your ASMR for the night. Waste not, want not. And then we put them together. Oh, yeah, this one's not going to be enough. Maybe. So we're just pushing it in. Lavender and cedarwood is one of my favorite knives. I've never, I've, I've used um, cedarwood one time, but I didn't use it by itself. And I used it in a soap. And it was a blend of cedarwood and sandalwood. So I'm not really sure what cedarwood smells like by itself. I'm sure it's amazing though. Um, Nyla brought, she made me so upset. She brought a vetiver candle. How dare you buy a candle, kid? All right. So they are our bath bombs. And what we want to do is we want to use this spoon here to break them off. So we tap, tap to help it release. And then when we do that, there's the top right there. And then we can take the bottom, kind of give it a nudge. And then there is that one. Now, sometimes you can put them on um, like egg crates or something along those lines. I didn't do that. And now trying to get them out of here is always interesting. You just kind of want to tap it. And you can kind of see that it's pushing itself away from the edges. And I'm going to push down. There you go. And I'm not sure. Uh, I want you to see this side. So we have that side of the flower. We have that side of the flower. And then there's the white side. You don't want to do too much movement with it at this point because it has to harden up. And you see, as I keep messing with it, I'm losing my flower petals. So I'm going to leave it. See that? Don't, don't do what I just did. Now we're going to do our little baby bath bomb. Tap that out. Tap that one out. And when we do, we get a little sphere, little circle. Just like that. And then we sit it here and let it dry overnight. Um, now you will notice because I'm putting it on a flat table, there is a chance that you'll have a flat bottom bath bomb. Not it's not the worst thing in the world. It just means that the weight of the bath bomb has settled. And as it set, it started to flatten it out. Oh, this was one we just did. So I'll hold off on taking that one out. All right, let's see if we can get this flower out. Tap, 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 tap. It helps when you sing to it. Mm, there we go. Comes right off. And then here is that side. 
you set mine on bubble. Yeah, bubble wrap is a great, great alternative to putting it on a flat. Now these are okay flat. And then we'll do the same for this one. Oh, I didn't tap it. When you tap, I don't know. Let me bring it up some so you can see. So initially it's adhered to all the sides. As you tap it, it helps to release that. And if you let it sit in here for a little while, you know, when I push it and pull, it comes right off. And I love how they look on the side. So you can see the blue and the white that we have. Okay, there's our flowers. Now let's look at our monster bombs or monster size. You don't have to do as much tapping. This is just kind of, I've done it that way forever. So I'm going to do it again. Now remember, this has that sphere, which is going to give us a little bit of extra. So there's the top. And then I'm going to kind of flip it. And then there's the bottom. It kind of looks like a flying saucer. Um, you can let that stay on there. It may break off. So it's really up to you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and break it off because it looks like it wants to do it anyway. So I'm just going to take that off the sides. And then you have that one there. And we'll set her down. And now, I don't know if these have been in long enough, but we'll go ahead and tap it out. I don't even need to tap it out. And then you kind of like feel the top to see that it's all secure. This is the best time to make bath bombs. I cannot make bath bombs in the summertime. Um, I get a humidity situation where it just does not want to cooperate. So you see how this has that extra like ring? You can push it off or leave it. And then here is the last one for this size. And then we take the other side and take her off. And we just set them overnight. Now here's the last two. Yeah, um, Shelly is saying, yeah, winter time, I mean, summertime with bath bombs is a no-go. I mean, they just crumble. There's something about the moisture in the air and they just don't want to, they don't want to cooperate. This one doesn't want to release. There was a little bit of water at the bottom of this. I should have completely dried it because, oh, there we go. This one was the pretty much all white bath bomb with a little bit of blue. Come on, you want to roll, stay on. And then here, look, that little mini one. See what happens. I didn't take the water out, so it's stuck to the inside. Yeah. So that'll be the one I use in the shower tonight. So that's all there is really to it. I know that was pretty long. Hmm, I'll bring you guys back over so I can say, hey. And I'm not sure if you'll be able to still see the bath bombs. No, you can't. All right, let me lower you. There they go. All right. And then my head's cut off, but that's not as important. So you got a chance to see what it's like to make your own bath bombs. We see them in the stores. Um, the amazing part about making your own bath bombs is you get to be certain of the ingredients that are in your bath bomb. Um, look, they're already, that sphere part is coming off from there. So somebody said they look great. I'm going to turn them to the side. That looks great. <clears throat> that would be those over there, right? And so thank you, Andrea. So these are bath bombs. And then what you do is you get yourself some Walta. You guys know how I love to do live demonstrations, right? So we're gonna pretend this is our tub full of love right here, all right? Let's get rid of all of it now. There is going to be some fizz that happens in here only because um, 
there's still fizz stuff in there. But I'm going to put a little bit of water just so you can see. Oh, no. Didn't do it. Okay. So we're going to go to the little, the one that was as broke as we could possibly get, right? Bring this closer. And then when you drop that in, what happens is it just creates a, can you hear it? I don't know. Can you hear it? A fizz, fizz, bubble. It's, it's a very silent. It's a silent fizz, fizz, bubble, bubble. But what it's doing is it's releasing the um, the bath bomb or it's having a reaction. Wait, what's happening? Focus camera, focus. We're a little blurry, but we're now getting a bubbly fizz inside of the water. They look great now. I am setting up to make some bath bombs. You hear a little, yeah, it's like a little teeny tiny fizz, but we used a little baby one. And you sit in that with your, am I blurry? Here, let me switch the camera. Fix it. Logitech, we want. Bam. And now let's go here. That's not the one. There we go. All right. So that's what you have in your tub. And so this was like a little little teeny tiny mini one and it's very very relaxing now remember we did not add the bubbling agent which is the sodium lauryl sulfate slsa um if you want bubbles in the tub you can use slsa if you just want a relaxing bath with the bath fizzy you can absolutely positively use the um just the baking soda and the citric acid. That is what creates the reaction in the tub when it comes in contact with the water. Hello, Raiho. Very good to see you. So this has been a fun broadcast. I have to do one more because we didn't make it to Amazon Live. If you guys are not connected with me on Amazon, I am Zakia Ringgold over there. And I'm about to go live over there. And we're going to make our oatmeal bath bomb. And then we'll also do one more herbal bath bomb with a combination of lemon and orange. So a citrus one. So that's the three pack. We have the healing oatmeal one. We have the lavender tranquility one. And then we have the invigorating um, orange and lemon. So we'll do those two over there. Thank you all for joining me live. If you have questions or the recipe, I will give you that one more time because you have stuck around for so long. Um, baking soda, we did 25 ounces. Citric acid, we did 14 ounces. Arrowroot powder, we did five ounces. If you do not have arrowroot powder, um, it's much easier to get cornstarch. You can substitute the cornstarch for the arrowroot powder. Um, so five ounces on the arrowroot or cornstarch. Shea butter or any thick butter, those butters are going to help your bath bombs to stick together. And it's also going to be the moisture element in your bath. So we use two ounces of shea butter and then 1.5 ounces of lavender infused olive oil. You don't have to infuse your olive oil. You can absolutely positively just use regular olive oil you can use um, hemp seed oil, uh, avocado oil, whatever light oil or liquid oil that you have. Avoid castor oil that's a little bit too thick. Um, and then we used a half an ounce of water, a half an ounce of alcohol, and then half an ounce of lavender essential oil. And that is the recipe where as long as you are not in a very humid client, client climate, um, they will stick and they will get hard if you just allow them to sit for about 24 hours. 10 to 24 hours will be enough. And as the beautiful, where is she? Shelly gave us some excellent, excellent advice. Bubble wrap. Put them on some bubble wrap if you don't want flat bottom bath bombs. All righty. Great video. Lots of tips and info. Thank you, guys. This has been a pleasure to do. I absolutely love doing these live streams and I'm just getting my training wheels back. We used to broadcast every single day. I'm not doing that. 
definitely not doing that. But I'm just getting back into the swing of things. And um, a lady has asked me specifically for a bath bomb. So I figure kill two birds with one stone. Or I hate that's a horrible saying. Why are we killing birds? But, you know, you are very welcome. Everybody have a great night. And thank you for tuning in for Super Soap Sunday. Bye, everybody. And... I'm where human. Oh, what then? Okay. So if you are in uh, good to see you too, Tammy, um, if you are in a uh, very high humidity, I really don't have a solution other than making them in a place where you have a dehumidifier that can bring the humidity level down to about 60% at least. Um, but even still, you're probably going to have to use more alcohol to bind them and more, um, I would even probably use, no, Epsom salt might draw water to it. I'm not sure. Um, I just avoid, <laughs> you know how I deal with it with humidity? I don't make them. I don't make them in very high humidity, but if that's where you live, um, Dre is in Vegas. Um, so use a dehumidifier in the space where you are um, to prevent them from cracking and don't do really large batches. You want to mix them up like the batch that i made is probably the biggest batch that i would make in a high humidity place because they will start to dry out immediately or they will um, pull the moisture from the air and that will cause them to crack so do a small batch move fast don't live stream while, or live stream while you're doing it um but just go 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 um the more time that you just have the mixture sitting the more likely it is to uh wilt and fall apart, crumble, whatever, in that humid temperature. I'm Zakia Ringold of LiveSoapSchool.com, where this recipe and others will be listed on the blog, as well as NaturalSoapByZakia.com, where we make the most amazing plant-based skincare. And what time are you going live on Amazon? As soon as I clear this off, I'm going to go live on there. I have to use OBS for that. So there you go. All right, everybody. Great seeing you. Bye.